In this section of the tutorial, we will now machine this part from a solid model and you will immediately see the advantages over machining from 2D geometry. Let's bring the face mill in and select roughing and the face milling toolpath needs a little tune up. We're going to start at 0.25 and end at 0. This needs to be a hundred thousandths above the top of the part because this is our entry and exit clearance plane. Anytime you want to know what any data field is trying to represent, simply go to help balloons and wave your mouse in the area and it will give you an indication of what is happening in this data field. These are the entry and exit clearance planes. Balloons can be turned on and off with control B. Here we are back to our facing toolpath. RPM is 965. Entry feed is 32. Contour feed is 64. Our cut width is 70% of the cutter. That's 3 times 0.7 equals. No Z stock. We're going to machine the stock, not a shape. We're going to machine in one direction for best flatness and also to throw the chips towards the back of the machine and not towards the operator at the front because this is a three axis vertical mill. Our start corner is going to be X plus Y minus and our first cut direction is X minus. We're going to use a roll in entry to make our inserts last longer and to give us a better finish on the entry point and that is a clockwise roll in entry by the way. Our Z step desired needs to be set to something that the cutter can handle. This cutter has a maximum depth of cut on the 45 section of 0.22. Let's set this to 0.1 which Gibbs Cam will divide it by 3 and give us an actual of 0.0833 which is approximately an 8 horsepower cut. Clearance of 0.05 when that cutter comes down just before it engages the part it will be a half inch away from the part. And again another half of an inch on this side as it clears the part. Let's see do we have everything we need? Let's click do it and there we go. There is our face milling operation. Now when we go into simulation we're going to select the solid model and the reason being is now when we get into simulation and we have a solid model we can come to the OpSim rendering control and select stock transparency. With stock transparency turned on we can now see the part inside of the transparent stock. One of the primary functions of any CAM system is to create code and the second function of any CAM system is to show us what we've cut before we send it out to the floor. That way we can make our mistakes here on the computer where it doesn't cost a dime to crash a pixel but it costs a lot of money to crash a spindle out on the floor. Again that was select the solid before you go into OpSim and select transparent stock. Now we can see the part, see it before you machine it, just got a lot better. Let's press the clear button and let's find our half inch end mill that we're going to use to rough out this part. Here it is right here. It's tool 12. On our roughing end mills we are going to use volume mill but if you'll notice on our roughing end mills we usually put a small radius on the cutter and you can purchase them that way. It makes the end mill last quite a bit longer and when we go to do our finish cuts we will select an end mill with a zero radius. In volume mill, volume mill is a modern high speed machining tool path. It cuts your parts with end mills twice as fast with four times better tool life and drastically lower part distortion. 
Volumil is a win-win-win situation for you and your machine shop. Let's go to Technology Expert and let's have the Volumil Technology Expert figure out our feeds and speeds and depth of cut and width of cut as well. That's very important in Volumil. The material is carbon steel. The Rockwell C is 10. Our machine is a 40 taper. The max spindle RPM of this machine is 10,000 and the max feed rate is 250. We set our workpiece holding sliders to start always in the middle and then as we experiment with cutting the part we can either go to rigid and aggressive or to loose and conservative. Our tool path is volume mill style. Our tool holder is hydraulic chuck. Our tool coating is coated. All of the RPM, feed rate, depth of cut, and width of cut are figured out. All we have to do is click apply all. And the cutting parameters have been applied here to the volume mill process. We're going to leave some XY stock for finishing. And we're going to set the top of our tool path to zero and the bottom of our tool path as we remember from the dimensions of the part it's an inch 250 let's go minus 1.280 let's make that minus 1.280 let's set our entry and exit clearance planes to a hundred thousands above the current top of the part our plunge type we don't need to helix. Our start side, we could start on the Y minus, Y plus, X plus, X minus. We definitely want to climb and we want coolant and flood. Although this is carbon steel. For carbon steel, we turn coolant off because coolant causes thermal shock. As the end mill goes into the material, it gets hot. As it comes out, the coolant hits it and causes it to fracture. So for carbon steels, we turn the coolant off and use air. For non-carbon steels or non-ferrous steels, we use coolant because we have to because of the lubricity. And we just have to deal with the fracturing because of thermal shock. In solid model machining, we use use stock material only and we click do it and let's see what type of tool path we get there we have the outside of the part is roughed in the correct steps let's watch it go in OpSim we can simply pick up right where we left off by pressing run and the volume mill tool path is a circular tool path with variable radius lead ends and variable feed rate lead ends. Volume mill means volumetric cutting. We're also not trapping the cutter by using 50 or 60 or 70 percent of the cutter. We're only using 12 percent of the cutter which allows us to take our feed rate from 20 or 30 inches a minute up to a much faster 250 inches a minute and the cutter life remember is four times greater and also on volume mill we get to use two times the diameter of the cutter in depth instead of 25 percent as in old style roughing now we have a little bit of material to take out here on the step let's take our current volume mill process and just change the step to minus one and press do it. We don't have to select any new geometry because use stock and material only is turned on. Gibbscam knows where the material is and it takes it out automatically. Now we have to cut this top step right here. We don't even need to leave Gibbscam. OpSim rendering. Let's just set our depth of step to minus 0.250 because we know that's where the step is and click do it. Watch the tool path generate. Here it comes and it now cuts out the middle and we are now 
ready for finishing this part. In volume L, you simply click on the part, set the depth, and set use stock and material only. Gibbscam figures out the rest. Now, in volume L, we work from the bottom up in depth steps. In old school conventional machining, we work from the top down because we're only using 25% of the length of our end mill. So in volume mill strategy, this use stock material only and starting from the bottom up allows us again to process our parts faster. In the next segment of this video, we will now finish the outside of the part.